And it can fucking fly. I mean, yeah, it's a flying fucking toilet. What's going on everybody, Dragas here, and welcome back to another episode of the best Besiege creations for this final week of April. So to start off with, we got something interesting. This is supposed to be an aerial runway, or an aerial, uh, I guess you would say, hangar. Uh, regardless, it's got a small plane on the top, with a small little hangar, and you're supposed to be able to take off and land on this big-ass thing. So I do have it pinned currently, but this thing does totally float around. You can actually drive it around, so let's unpin this. There we go. You can see it's moving right now. We can uh, raise it up if we want to, and you can totally drive this thing. Oh god, plane? Plane, what are you doing? Okay, I never said the plane would stay on the runway. Let's actually turn on the engines here, and that's not good. Okay, well, that was a complete failure. No wonder why this isn't a real thing. Well, now I know this plane has no brakes, at least, so let's actually just slow this thing down. I'm assuming you don't want this to be... What the hell? Oh, I was actually hitting the, <laughs> the plane's throttle instead of the uh, blimps. But yes, here we go. Fucking majestic takeoff. We didn't need that wheel anyways. Okay, but now we can totally control this little plane. It looks like my runway is a little bit sideways. It looks like it's evening out, though. I'm going to try and take down this statue and then land again. That is the ultimate goal. You can actually see I'm having some really weird latency issues with this build as well. I don't know if it's the build or if it's Besiege just bugging out. But let's try and uh, fire the cannons off at this thing. I want to aim it up. There we go. Right there. <laughs> Took it out. Okay, but now let's see if we can land this thing. I'm gonna say this is definitely not gonna happen. Oh shit, that wasn't the runway. Okay, well we made it to the ground anyways. <laughs> that didn't go as planned at all, but let's go back to the actual thing and see if we can still drive this. I did take out part of it, but it still should be totally drivable as you can see. And now I'm gonna run this thing into the wall just because I like to see big flying objects break down. It's the best thing in this game. Oh yes, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. I was hoping for a little bit more destruction, but that's good enough for me. We can actually see inside now and see how it works. It's just got a bunch of those uh, floating uh, balloons in there. And yes, the knights are still trying to fight this thing. That knight is gonna so die. Watch, here we go. Oh, oh, how did he survive that? Okay, I feel like this map is a much more fitting area for this uh, awesome little hangar here. So I'm going to take this thing off, try and take down one of these things. Let's try right away here. I'm feeling pretty confident in my abilities. I'm uh, just going to even this out and bam. Oh, fuck. I totally missed. Okay, well, I just all I want to do is try and land this thing again. So I don't know if it's even landable, to be honest, because you can't actually turn off the engines once you start them. But if I can make it to the runway and kind of crash into it, I'll consider that a success. Okay, I slowed this down quite a bit because this plane is extremely hard to fly. It's a very basic plane, so yeah, pretty much landing it is damn near impossible. I'm going to say that's as good as I'm going to get it, and that, that was a total failure, to be honest. So yeah, the aerial runway, going to say in the real world, probably not the best idea because any sort of weight transfer would make this thing wobble all over the place, but pretty fun in Besiege. And next up, we got something called the Perfect Quad. Now, I think we saw one of the Perfect Quads before. I don't know if it was made by the same creator, and this is just a rehashed version. But yes, this is an auto-stabilization quad with some of the most, actually, probably, honestly, the most firepower I've seen on any aerial vehicle. So we're going to go through the firepower right now. First of all, we have Hyper Flamethrowers. This is uh, extremely modded flamethrowers that, uh, yeah, do that. Pretty much a big ball of freaking fire. How? Why is this not catching on fire? There we go. Now it hits. I actually caught two on fire. And then we have some OP cannons, which are actually modded cannons that can actually break through the Tolburn Rock and pretty much these things as well. You can see the recoil it put on this thing, which is pretty damn impressive. Those are some fast-ass shots. Let's do it again here. Oh, there we go. Well, we got rid of that one, but we still have lots of firepower to take out this final guy. And when you're done with those cannons, you got three cannons on the top, which are just totally normal cannons. So H, J, and... How am I not hitting this? I, do... I feel like I'm way closer than I actually am. Oh my god! Well, so much for being the perfect quadcopter, I just fucking broke it now, didn't I? Okay, but I still want to go through all this firepower for you. We're not done yet. We got some missiles here. It looks like a barrage of four each, I believe. Wow, that was actually a really good shot for once. And then we got four more, of course, as well. Did I hit it? No, of course I didn't. And when that is all done, we actually have, I don't even know how many bombs. I'm just going to show you guys. Seriously, it's just going to keep dropping them. There we go. And 
I think we still got some more. Yes, we do. And some more as well. So, yeah, uh, probably about 30 bombs, I'm going to say. And I don't know why I'm crashing now, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of firepower. All that jam-packed into this quite small design. Actually, it's pretty big for a quadcopter, as it probably should be, though. I mean, it has all that things inside of it. But yeah, you can see a lot of the things inside here. Actually, you can see the flamethrowers on the front. That flamethrower mechanism takes that many flamethrowers to do this. So yeah, lately, a lot of you guys have been requesting some uh, weapon-based designs, and this one is definitely <laughs> up that alley. One of the best weaponized aerial vehicles I've seen in a long time. And next up, we got this interesting design. This is basically a tank aircraft carrier. It's called an autocraft carrier because all of these planes are automated. Basically, you can do it the easy way, which is just letting these things go. And oh shit, I hit the fucking castle already. Okay, let me actually back up and show you what's supposed to happen, though. Uh, these things just go in a pattern that drop bombs in, in beside you, essentially. It's really cool to actually watch. So th these planes are all automated, and then it will drop bombs, as you can see. And then the plane will just keep spinning. And when there's not a castle in the way, it will just keep going upwards and upwards. Not on the ground doing spins like this. But yes, they can all do this, and it's all automated. Now, if you don't want to do that, though, you can actually control these things a little bit as well. You can see that it just drops all its bombs all around this thing. It's a really cool design. Now, like I said, though, you can actually kind of control these aircraft carriers, and what I mean by that is you can make it go straight whenever you want. So if I turn this on, and then I want it to go straight right now, for example, uh, we unfortunately missed the castle, but I was the one who let that thing go straight. We're going to go again here and see if we can maybe hit it. Uh, yeah, it's going a bit too high. Let's try and go straight right away, and I missed it once again because I'm fucking awful. Okay, let's try again here. I'm, I'm gonna get this, damn it. There we go. First try, I did just touch it, and it slowly knocked it down. That was actually absolutely awesome. Let's do another one here. I'm gonna wait this time, and yeah, the po unfortunate part is it slowly goes up and up higher and higher, and if you wait too long, obviously, you're gonna miss your target. But, uh, very unique weapon design. I've never seen anything like this, and it just drops its bombs after about five seconds. Now I'm just curious what happens if I do them all at the same time. It looks like they'll just go in the same pattern. That is so damn cool looking. And you can see it actually explodes in a good radius around the actual creation. So kind of hard to aim, but a very interesting design at that. And when you're all out of kamikaze planes to use, you also have a few other weapons up your sleeve. Of course, this is a tank as well. You can always just run shit over, but it's also got some cannons, as you can see. And it's got uh, a really good flamethrower system that goes all the way around this creation. Obviously, this thing's all metal, so it is fireproof. And next up, we got a toilet. Yes, once again, uh, it seems like every week we got some weird-ass, oddly specific furniture designs. I guess, technically, is a toilet an appliance or is it considered a piece of furniture? Because you are sitting on it. I'm gonna say it's more of an appliance than anything else. But yes, this is a toilet, and it's not just any toilet. This toilet has actually confirmed, completed all the levels in this game, and it can fucking fly. I mean... Yeah, it's a flying fucking toilet. Okay, but what we're actually here to see is what kind of damage this thing can do. Now, this thing's weapon is called Explosive Poop, so you can hit the button here, it opens up, and... <laughs> <laughs> and it's explosive poop, so I think it has three shots, and that's pretty much it. It can also obviously fly. I believe it has a grabber on the bottom, too, if you would like to grab someone. Very easy to control. Oddly, for a toilet, this is probably one of the easiest flying machines out there. And if a toilet wasn't enough for you, we actually got a fucking piano. A weaponized piano. What will be next week? I have no idea because we've done pretty much every appliance and piece of furniture now. This is getting ridiculous. But I gotta say, I appreciate the attention to detail. I mean, look at this thing. That is a fucking nice piano, man. <laughs> like, seriously. The modding that went into this is pretty impressive. Unfortunately, my major complaint with this weapon is it cannot fly. You should know that every piece of furniture should be able to fly by now. Anyways, yeah, you can actually, as you can see, there's quite a few missiles in here. So let's start shooting some of these off, I guess. <laughs> I never thought I'd be destroying a castle with a freaking piano, but uh, that definitely did a good job at that. And we also got some missiles on the top here that I almost forgot about. Don't want to forget about those ones. And when you're all out of missiles, you can actually close this sucker up. And it totally doesn't look like a piece of weapon at all. So yeah, the weaponized toilet and the weaponized piano. Honestly, I can't wait to see what we get next week. What are we going to get? A fucking hammock? So I always love a good Rube Goldberg machine, and we haven't really seen any as of late. This is called the Marble Machine, and basically all it does is keep these marbles going in a pattern all around this contraption. 
Uh, you can see they're starting to go up top here. This is going to be really fun to see. Uh, from what I understand, it just goes down this little alleyway and then hits this and then goes back up again. And it's supposed to last forever, constantly have, having marbles going around. A very zen-like machine, and I really appreciate it. So here we go. We got one marble coming down here. It's going to hit this thing. I don't know if they're going to go around this loop. I hope they do or it just falls down. Oh, it looks like it just falls down, unfortunately. But yes, the final marble is waiting there. So yeah, you have marbles constantly going around this thing. A pretty interesting little design. Now, another cool feature that I just noticed about this contraption is they added a gimbal camera, which is really nice to see. You can actually see some of the camera movements that you can do in this game now with the new camera blocks. Uh, you can actually control this camera left, right, and it just looks great. I love any sort of smooth camera, and it's really hard to get a nice smooth uh, video for Besiege, so it's nice to see that some of these cameras are being made for certain creations. So yeah, definitely no weapon of war here, but something that's very awesome to look at. I love this spiral design that brings the uh, rocks up as well. Very well thought out and uh, very pleasing to the eye, so I really appreciate it. Okay, and next up we got the Fireball Drone. Now this thing is, well, it was I think it was originally made as a weapon, where you can turn this thing on and do a bunch of damage. You get the idea. Have some fun with a crazy-ass design. But what it's so cool for, in my opinion, is making badass patterns. So let's go really slow here and I want to show you guys a few cool patterns that you can make with this thing so we're gonna put the camera way up here and let's actually do the first one which is a spiral galaxy or a rocket flower design as you can see this is awesome this is what I like so much about this thing because it makes these awesome ass patterns that look absolutely beautiful I actually kind of want to see that from the side too now Okay, I don't know if it's gonna look as cool from the side, but we're gonna find out. Let's just test it out. There we go, and all the rockets spread. That is so damn beautiful. Definitely looks a lot cooler from the top, but you can see how spread out they are just from uh, doing that. And we got another design here. This one's called the Blossoming Flower. You're actually supposed to do this one from the ground. So first of all, you drop the things on the ground, let them stop moving, and then ignite them up. And here is the beautiful Blossoming Flower, as you can see. Uh, I probably should have watched that from the top. I'm really curious to see if there's any uh, difference in terms of the design. All right, all right, let's try this again, though, way from the top. So I'm going to drop them off. There they are on the ground. You can kind of see them and ignite. And there is the blossoming flower. Now, the castle is getting in the way a little bit, so the design isn't perfect, but it does look pretty damn awesome. Okay, and the final one is called Meteor Dance. We're actually supposed to make it fall a little bit. Now, we're going really slow right now, so we are actually following falling quite fast so let's do this really quickly here i'm supposed to let them go and then here is the meteor dance it's called basically the downward version of what we did it the first time and once again very very beautiful uh, look at that i love that middle design there that looks so damn cool <laughs> i love anything pattern so this is just absolutely awesome for me but yeah, it's supposed to do different patterns depending how long you wait to ignite them. So for example, if we wait a little longer this time and let these things spread a bit and then ignite it, uh, it's going to be a slightly different design than the first one. As you can see, it's maybe a bit, a little bit more spiral-like. And look at that middle. That looks so freaking cool. This is just, this is just eye candy, man. I love this thing. Anyways, guys, that wraps it up once again for another episode of the Best Besiege Creations. I hope you enjoyed these really awesome, unique designs. Uh, a little bit of a shorter episode this week. There really wasn't that much going on in the Besiege community, unfortunately. And that just happens sometimes. That's just the way things go. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed them. Regardless, as always, I just want to say thank you for watching and liking, and I will see you in the next one.